Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming to this new GMI webinar. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again. Today we are here and we talk about, uh, uh, we talk about the power supplies, especially about safety power supplies. And it is a, a very important time for safety applications. Mm -hmm. So today we are here from uh, GMI, of course, Italy. Our host, your host, will be Massimo Pagani. It's uh, our product manager, and uh, Massimo has a very long experience in technical support, the technical department in the process industries, more than 20 years experience in the, in the reparation and development of uh, devices. And uh, of course, uh, he can, uh, he will explain, he will be the, say, the speaker today. And uh, also myself, we have Massimo, I'm Andreas Polover, working for GMI uh, from about uh, five years and uh, our experience in automation and uh, process as and uh, let's say all related automation manuals. Of course, uh, first of all, information for you, uh, chat is disabled if you wanna uh, send some uh, uh, say message to us or question, whatever you have, just uh, uh, say push the Q and A button. That will be the right one for posing question to us. Okay. So at the end, uh, we leave at say Massimo talking about uh, uh, GMI and the products. First, I will talk myself about my GMI, and then uh, we have uh, question and answer time mm -hmm. for you. Okay, so just to give you an introduce about the GMI, so it's an international company that produces uh, intrinsically safe and seal certified device for the most uh, critical application in the market. So, uh, auto certifications, uh, fractional safety for oil and gas, chemical, petrochemical, mining, food, pharmaceutical, uh, and so on. Uh, GMI has more than 40 experience, uh, founded in 1993. The former name was Elcon Instruments, and nowadays uh, GM International. We call it GMI because it's uh, easy, you know, it's easy to understand it, and we call it. We produce completely in our uh, state of art uh, facility in Milan. So, but we have a global presence in uh, five continents. This is the product range from uh, our. Uh, I see, sorry, I see just one person that uh, raised their hands. Please wait, and we will answer later to your questions. So, come back to the product. We produce uh, uh, solutions, I guess, uh, isolators or barriers, safety blades, isolators with uh, serial certification, power supplies, multiplexer, also for Azardusar and uh, safety applications. Termination board, FTA, dedicated for DCS applications, heart multiplexers, surge protection, loop uh, indicators, that's a full loop with the uh, certification. And also the last bullet is uh, regarding our book. It's not a proper product, but uh, we, we are proud to say that we'll, uh, we have now printed more than 25,000 copies in different editions during the year and we gave all of them free of charge to all our customers. So if you later on, you would need to have a, a copy of that, just uh, send us an email. So we will uh, treat your question, we treat your request. And uh, of course, we just ask for the, uh, the expedition cost, but the book is free of charge. Uh, there is also a book which is uh, in a track format, so you can have it more easy way, of course. Uh, our goal is warranted the most the highest standard of quality. So our products have been certified from uh, 15 different agency laboratories. Uh, of course, a function safety management is a certification we have in place, uh, systematic capabilities, and so on. So we, we, we have a lot, uh, let's say, we invest a lot in new research and development for new products and uh, of course we provide also five years warranty for all products in, that we produce. 
Uh, as we say, we produce uh, completely in Italy. We have uh, complete traceability uh, for all components, full testing, 100% of the product has been tested in uh, automatization. The product is really automatized. We are also compared with ROS and REACH. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, no. So on that, some numbers about the GMI. So we have uh, uh, eight uh, subsidiaries in different continents from uh, America to Asia. Uh, we do have also distributors, local distributors that are part of qualified partners, around about 200 people all over the world. Also 18 courses per year for functional safety engineer and the number of installation that is uh, really, really important. Some numbers, some uh, names about customers. So we provide the product uh, to the system vendors and DCS companies, to the APCs, of course, is also a customer of us. OEM, special uh, machinery companies, or say, special application uh, where the product can be installed and also approved by the end users. So this is, uh, okay, we can start to the, let's say, um, the topic of today, but uh, first of all, the, there is a poll. I would like to have your opinion about uh, this map. So if you can, uh, let's say, it's only a question of one minute, not more, so please wait. Thank you for voting. We will share also the result about that. Thank you. Wait one minute. Not more. Okay, stop now, polling. Thank you. If you want, I want to share with you the results about this. So most of you use a standard power supply, only a few percent, two percent use a seal rated power supplies only, but there are a quite nice part that they use both solutions. And those in this case, uh, um, the failure rate for the power supply is uh, something uh, considered by the most of you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And go to the presentation. So I leave Massimo. I leave Massimo to the presentation. Okay, thank you, Maria. Thank you for your introduction. Well, now let's move on to the presentation on today's topic, which takes into consideration the power supply system and the value that they have uh, within a safety loop. Let's start by introducing the concept of uh, SIS, safety instrumented system. SIS uh, is a set of uh, subsystems that make up the safety loop. Within this safety loop, we have uh, field devices, such as uh, transmitters or sensors, which allow us uh, to control, detect, uh, and measure variables in the field, such as uh, temperature, pressure, or other. Uh, they are drive by barriers or isolators that provide for limiting the current towards the hazardous area or to isolate field instruments. And uh, in turn, the signal sent by the field loop will be acquired, managed, and interpreted by what is the brain of the system or the, or the PLC DCS system, which uh, will decide uh, on any action to be taken to make a plant to safe. And again, uh, we have uh, power interfaces, as can be a safety relay, 
which will then act uh, on the, a valve and uh, on uh, an actuator, which allow us to bring the system in safety in case of need. The main concept that needs uh, to be understood is that every single element of the system must be sized with a seal level, such as uh, to allow us to obtain the overall seal of the seal required. All the power supplies that will be part of the system, for example, those that will power the PLC-DCS, those that will supply voltage to operate valves and actuators, those that will help barriers, uh, isolator and transmitter to work properly. We will also play a fundamental role in a safety related loop. And it's also important that they also have an adequate steel level. All components uh, of a system, including power supplies, must be safety related and have a steel level. This helps us to have a second loop and with the current redundancy, a loop with high availability to the process. Uh, next slide, please, Andrea. Now let's take a look uh, at the power supply and uh, what are the possible risks and the condition that we consider dangerous in relation to the use of the power supply. The concept of safety is very important also with regard to power supply system because the failure of a power supply can cause serious accident, then lead to serious losses in terms of human lives, serious environmental damages, and serious cost losses for companies. For the reason it's necessary to have safe devices that guarantee high performance. But uh, what are the dangerous conditions for a power supply system? Well, uh, mainly there are uh, two dangerous for condition. The first one is an undefined load voltage in a range between 2 and 20 volts must be considered as dangerous failure of our power supply. This is because an incorrectly powered load works or can work out of specification and this leads to a reduction in a load performance that can cause a premature instrument failure. Often we try to avoid this issue using redundancy, but uh, we mistakenly think that two power supply in parallel are sufficient to make us immune from possible faults in the power supply system. Redundancy cannot solve uh, on its own and cannot guarantee us immunity from power supply failure because as standard power supply system, it does not take into account the common more faults that can afflict the standard power supply. This common more fault can cause poor system faults with the related production downtime, which would significantly affect cost. And uh, the redundancy of safety power supply minimize the risk because common mode failure are considered in the C calculation necessary to get the certification for a safety related device. The second dangerous failure condition of a power supply is when the output voltage reaches a value higher than 30 volt. In this condition, the load is subject to extra voltage, we can damage it or in case of output voltage higher than 50 volt DC, the field instrumentation can suffer a definitive disruption. We can take, for example, an engine cooling system, which works uh, thanks to a standard power supply. 
Suppose that uh, this power supply fails and goes into an over voltage condition, damaging the cooling system. This will lead to an overheating of the engine, which will lead to serious consequences for the wool system connected to heat. Once again, I want to underline the value of having a separate power supply system, which guarantee has high performance and safety. So next slide, Andre. Thank you. So um, why not to use a separate power supply? Below we list the main reason that lead us to strongly advise the use of a separate power supply system. A standard power supply is not designed based on the directive of the ESC 61508. It does not have have made a calculation defining for safety function to be obtained. It does not allow to have redundant protection from overvoltage issue. While in a safety power supply system, redundant protection are a fundamental requirement. And again, a standard supply system um, can be used in a redundant configuration, but uh, they do not guarantee that our application is totally safe for the reason related to the common fault, which we have seen previously. And also standard power supply often require external or rain diodes to allow for redundancy. This means uh, to add up external wiring that especially for high load currents create a high voltage drop which has a strong impact on the supply voltage. It's uh, true that it's possible to adjust the output voltage to compensate for the voltage drop, but uh, this operation increases consumption considerably. In addition, a standard power supply has a higher number of spools for that a separate power uh, than a separate power supply. We know well how a spurious spool can also lead to dangerous failures for the application. And also standard power supply use uh, internal components with the limited operating range. This affects uh, the life time of the device. For this reason, internally to the safety power supply are used uh, components with a higher operating range that allow the system to work at a lower stress level. This leads to less failure and consequently a considerably longer life than standard power supply system. Why it's important to use a safety power supply system? First of all, we know that the standard voltage for a normally energized load is in the 20, 30 volt DC range. As we have seen previously, condition uh, that lead to power supply output voltage between two and 20 volt and higher than uh, 14 volt are considered dangerous failure, which negatively affect the application. A separate power supply significantly reduces undetected dangerous fault thanks to a built-in diagnostic system. In fact, uh, if an anomalous output condition is detected by the separate power supply diagnostic, it brings the output to zero volt which represent the safe fault condition. Plus, a fault transistor alerts the PLC system, which can act as per C specification. Even in case of safety power supply output of a voltage condition, the internal diagnostic activates the redundant protection system for limiting the output voltage which bring the later to a zero volt, this means into a safe fault condition. Now, uh, we introduce the concept of safety power supply. 
applied to a typical application as uh, the energize to save or energize to save. As we know, typically the safety system are designed to remove power to the system. Typically, the, uh, the energize to save application. Therefore, the failure of the power supply, which goes to zero output voltage, is considered a safe failure. So we assume that uh, all safety functions are the energized to safety or the energized to free type. Really, there are many applications where the safety function is to energize the load. Therefore, for uh, therefore of the energized to safety or energized to free type, as in fire and gas system. A safety power supply is designed to guarantee a steel two or steel three safety level also for energized to safety application, which need to energize the load on request. Well, for this type of application, redundancy and over voltage protection are essential. Uh, a power supply redundancy system um, must be used when the safety of the power supply is essential. For this reason, the redundant, the redundant power supply system are used in critical sectors as, as uh, the oil and gas or pharmaceuticals, and in all those applications where the loss of power supply translating to the loss of sensitive information or in all those applications where the certainty of having a correct power supply or request is fundamental. It must also be used in all system where every means of production downtime is extremely costly. Let's uh, talk about uh, system availability to the process. As we see from the slide on the screen, for the energized to safety application, typically normally energized loads, the seal free safety level is easily reached through a type of one out of one configuration. For this type of op of application we can achieve uh, through redundancy and increase in availability to the process. This allows us uh, a further quality step in guaranteeing product production continuity at the plant and the higher safety levels. As regard energized to safety application, typically uh, normally the energized load, as mentioned above, redundancy is essential to reach a C2 or C3 level. In fact, without a redundancy with a single safety power supply, only C1 level can be reached. And also, availability to the project is low. But by composing a configuration one out of two or one out of three, it's possible to get a higher C level up to C3 and at the same time increase the, the availability of the process also for energized to safety application. Over voltage protection. Massimo, shall I move to the next one? Yes. Okay. This one? No. Uh, over voltage protection. Ability. Okay, yeah. Over voltage protection, as mentioned above, is fundamental in a safety power supply system because it allows us to reduce the risk of system downtime considerably. In fact, if one of the safety power supply fails in an over voltage condition, the protection brings the output to zero volt, allowing the other safety power supply to continue working correctly without the risk of sending the system to shutdown. 
a standard, a standard power supply without protection would cause a shutdown of the wool plant with the consequent repercussion on productivity and cost. A CO2 level power supply system with an over voltage protection is able to increase operational safety, productivity, and reduce costs. Next slide, Andrea. Thank you. In the, in the following slide, we see what uh, is the weight that the individual subsystem have within a stick. It's important uh, that uh, every single component of a SIP, including the power supply system, is included in the PFD AVG calculation to achieve the required safety level. Every single element has its own percentage weight, which must be considered. Here we see uh, other advantages that using a safety power supply brings. First of all, it can be installed in zone two, division two. The, this allows us to reduce wiring costs and it can be installed much closer to the load. More uh, power in a small space with the use of a rack system up to six power supply inside. The REC system also allows us to reduce wiring costs and allow us to have the diagnostic module on board to control all the main function of the safety power supply system. It's also possible to connect via Modbus the diagnostic system to a remote system. And again, we have easy maintenance and troubleshooting thanks to the hot swapping system, which allow, uh, allows the live replacement of uh, an element in the rack without having to disconnect any connection. Operation in our environmental condition thanks to the um, vibration test and the extended temperature range up to 70 degrees Celsius. And uh, as mentioned so far, availability for safety related application up uh, to seal free level. Here we show the typical application where safety power supply are used. Uh, for example, uh, fire and gas packages or store platform instrumentation and uh, BMS and BCS system. Etc. Andrea, uh, we have finished uh, our presentation. Yeah, there is another poll. I would like to have yeah. uh, this. Uh... Do you install power supplies in? It's like uh, one minute maximum. Yes, okay. Have you? I can stop. I don't see any other person voting. Okay. Okay, share the result. So most of you use, use power supplies in uh, safe area. Some of them in both uh, safe areas are the survey. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Massimo, for this presentation. Uh, this is our contact details. 
If you have any question, please don't hesitate to contact us at any time. And, uh, but uh, we wanted to uh, share with you another things about the question and answer. So you already posed a lot of questions during this, uh, uh, this presentation. So we want also to answer maybe live to this if we are able to do. I'm sharing now this new document with you. Okay, now I can, I think you can see. Uh, so the question was, uh, maybe you can answer to this question, Massimo. Uh, uh, I try to, to answer the question. Uh, in the meantime, you present uh, your presentation. Yeah, yeah. 24 volt, uh, we can repeat if you like, it because it's a very important point. Uh, 24 volt DC power supplies consider phase safe PFD equal to zero and do not impact the safety of the seas. So as Massimo said, of course, this is uh, uh, that's not true because uh, uh, the power supply are, uh, are phase, device, phase, device, phase safe device or PFD equal to zero. That is not true because as we say, uh, between 20 and 30 voltage, a typical operating range of the output for the power supplies and uh, there are possible dangerous failure over 30 voltage because uh, and this can damage the instrumentation. So it's very important to introduce a redundant protection circuit in order to protect for, from the over voltage. And uh, so the, also the output between two and 20 volt is also dangerous because it can uh, cause uh, uh, the malfunction and the, 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 the devices, field device can operate out of the range. So, and the, also this condition of course is uh, <clears throat> partially avoided with redundancy hmm, for the power supply. Uh, but there are always common cause failure. The, the really no beta factor, so then uh, the same device from the same manufacturer from uh, the same batch can have the same failure. So come the beta factor increases, say, uh, the risk of failure for the power supply. So there was another question. So, so during your registration, you pose this question, we try to summarize. So then we also try to answer to your question live. So I think you sent a lot here. So please the wait until uh, we answer. Okay, so all our power supply can influence performance of C's. And what is their design and preventive maintenance requirement? Uh, we also say this point, so in general, the power supply is uh, designed to, to go to safe state uh, from, uh, and uh, by disconnecting power. Mm -hmm. So the energized to three functionality is uh, the, say, the uh, phase safe state. But in the factory, the power cannot be turned off uh, because of, uh, let's say, uncertain, of course, uh, because of problems and so on. That is very critical. You cannot stop uh, producing uh, maybe in a chemical plant and so on. That is very critical. And uh, so they say that the power supply has a dual role in the safety. So the power needs to be reliable. So, so the over voltage have to protect uh, from the risk of burning the instruments and also the under voltage needs to be avoided. Um, but uh, of course, uh, uh, could cause the instrument to fail, not to go to safe state. That is uh, also a risk. Also the power needs to be available. So that's why the redundancy is very, very important and in industry has to be applied. As a preventive maintenance, we see maybe you call, you ask for the testing proof, and uh, if you are using a seal power supply or a seal device, the manufacturer has to uh, deliver to us, to you, also the 
safety manual with the, all details about the testing proof. So once you have the product that is certified for certain level seal, if you want to keep uh, for that level for a long time, you have to maintain, you have to test after a certain period the device. And in the manual, there are all details about the testing proof that is really required on your system, on your applications. Let's try to answer live to some questions you posed. So maybe Massimo, we can work. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see, does the power supply also have to be sealed too, or does the use of a galvanic isolator belt provide its own seal rated power supply into the transmitter loop? So that is a good question. Let's say that uh, uh, there are uh, isol so isol galvanic isolator with the seal power, seal rated, that can power the device. Of course, in that case, uh, the, we are talking about probably a two wire, but also can be four wire transmitter. If you have uh, a barriers connected with the power supply of the sensor connected with, and uh, you can of course uh, avoid to use uh, external power supply with the seal rating because the, already the barrier you are using is uh, uh, seal rated. So either use a power supply or a barrier. That's good for the seal rating. So this is a this answer. Um, so every SD system may require redundant power supply. That's true. Of course, the SD system is very, very critical. So it's uh, shutdown systems that require, of course, uh, safety power supplies. Uh, so another question is, uh, which is better, non-seal redundant power supply or non-redundant seal-free power supply? Please compare reliability and cost. Massimo, can you tell this, uh, to this uh, attendee something about that? Which is better, non-seal redundant power supply? So, to say, we have two power supply redundant uh, system, non-seal. It's better having that or have a non redundant just one power supply, C3, is compare reliability and cost. But in my opinion, it's better uh, non redundant C3 power supply because uh, he allows us to have uh, um, a good uh, C level and uh, in case of uh, redundant. Uh, we can increase uh, even the availability. For the cost, uh, I leave you talk uh, to you. Of course, the cost is a uh, non serial redundant power supply, even if you take two, is uh, are less expensive than a uh, redundant and then a three power supply. So the cost uh, is higher course, for the C3 power supplies. About reliability, of course, the C3 is uh, much more reliable and the probability of failure is very low. Why in, uh, for non-redund, non-seal power supplies, the probability of failure on demand is uh, uh, unknown. So, say that the cost is higher, but the reliability is a cert, is a, is known, while for non seal is really unknown. We hope we answer to this uh, question. Okay, so okay, let's go. Let's continue with the the question here with the presentation. Safe and dangerous failures, possible differences. Okay, so we already said that uh, safe state is uh, for the power supplies and the, uh, the, the voltage in the range 2030. That is the safe state. Dangerous state is uh, below 20 or over 30. Okay. Below 20, we already said that is a problem for the instrumentation because the instrumentation could work out a specification. But if you go higher than 30, 
also is a problem because it can destroy the uh, instrumentation. So that is uh, maybe the most important of things. So safety power supplies can alert you in case you have lower values of voltage, higher values of voltage, protecting by that. So you have an alert on that. Uh, you, you are, the output is protected from 30 volts by the over voltage. So dangerous state is something that is really avoid by having an, a safe power supply. So another poll, thank you for, if you take your time, maybe it's a very easy question. So, what power required do you need? Okay. What is your, let's say, power supplies, prefer no your application. Lot of people voting, thank you. I can share the results for you. So most of you, this, uh, I'd say, uh, choose for 20 amps, then 10 amps, 5 amps, and 50 amps, only one person. Okay, so let's continue with the question. If you have uh, more questions, uh, you can just write us, okay? Then we go with the ones that uh, you wrote you know, during your registration. Safety and availability, what is the difference? Also, that is very, very important because in the safety, in the ESC 61511, uh, it's a norm that taking account just for the safety and not for the availability. So it means that the safety is the most important things, most important uh, uh, parameters. So your plant must be safe, first of all. So a device would be safe is able to perform a certain function. So if you have a problem, if you have a valve, if you have an actuator, that uh, function that it may be is uh, critical must uh, um, be performed in the very with, with the very high probability. Okay, it's open or close a valve, start to stop a motor are the most common application. But also availability is. Uh, it's very, very important. That is defined as the proportion of time from which the equipment is able to perform its function. So availability is different from reliability. It means that a device is available for the time, for the most of time that I need. So uh, if the power supply fails during normal operation, its availability is lost. So if fails and my system going uh, off because of failure, that is a fail safe. So the system is uh, is uh, uh, is not working. My system, my plant is not working. I'm in a safe position, but I'm not operating. So I'm uh, I'm not available. I cannot produce. That is a very very important. Um, I have because maybe we had some problem with the previous slide. That is also important. So if you look at these uh, uh, pictures. Uh, looking at a normal energized load, uh, if I have a CD3 power supply, not a redundant, just one power supply, I can achieve the CD3 configuration, CD3 level, just one power supply for normal energized. Okay. If I use a redundant uh, system, two power supplies uh, working, powering the same plants, uh, the same, I have the same safety, C3, okay, but I have also high availability because one power, one system, one power supply can fail, the other will continue working. So 
it means that uh, I have a high safety and also high availability. Uh, looking for normal de-energized load, just one power supply also safe, uh, I can achieve just a seal wall. Okay. And uh, if I want to achieve the seal too, I have to use another power supply at least. And a third if you want to achieve the seal three. That is the configuration that I need. High integrity. Um, okay, As, let me check. Massimo, are there any questions uh, that people try to to answer via via message? Okay, good. So, C levels possible configuration. Okay, so look at uh, our unit. We can say that uh, we made an example with a normal energized load, just one power supply. For uh, if that power supply is participating with the ten percent of the CIF, uh, the T proof in this case is one point five years. So every one point five year, one year and a half, I have to test again the device in order to keep the same seal level. Okay. Uh, if this device is participating for the 20% of the CIF, okay, my tip proof, tip proof will be extended to three years. Okay. If I'm using the same power supplies for a seal 2 application, uh, and the seal 2 is enough, that is uh, the, t the testing time will be extended to 18 years. So it will be very long. So I can use for a very long time without testing. That is also important for the end user. If I use that one for the 20% of the CIF, for a CIF application here, I can have a T-proof limited to 20 years, which is the lifetime of the power supply. So, and if I use two parallel power supplies, you see that those numbers have been increased by a lot. So four parallel more, three, six parallel also a little bit more, okay. But I want to keep attention to you uh, that uh, if I have a C3 power supply, I want to use it for C2 application, I can use the same power supply without, uh, uh, for a very long time, without any testing. Okay. And the application is here also here for normal energized load that we change a little bit uh, as uh, with the parameters. Okay, so I think maybe it's, uh, maybe it's more clear for you also the question about uh, redundant and not redundant uh, T-proof testing and so on. Uh, Massimo, there is a, maybe a question, but we can go to this one at the moment. So a safe power supply shall be used for the system that only participate in the SIF. Massimo, if you want to talk about this. So the question is, I have to use the, the seal power supply only for safety function, or maybe also I can use also for non-safety related function. That is yes, for all the system involving a SIF, a functional safe power supply must be used because it's functional safety parameters must be considered together with those of the other device. Uh, we can say in the, in the presentation that uh, it's important to use a separate power supply because uh, is um, certified and have uh, the calculation, have made a calculation in respect to the standard power supply. For this, it is important to use a uh, uh, steel uh, power supply system. There is a question from uh, one attendee. Can the, can the periodic test be made in the panel with the load connected, or it is necessary to do a bench test? That's a good question. So uh, we have talked about uh, the T-proof, and you are referring to that. 
the T proof, there are two kinds uh, of T proof. Uh, there is a T proof uh, with the 50% and the T proof uh, 100%. It, what are the difference? Uh, the difference is uh, that uh, are that uh, one uh, with the 50% I can just uh, detect the part of the portion of value. The hundred percent is uh, the most complete I can detect basically all probability failure. So I can let's say uh, with the hundred percent of testing, of course, we have to disconnect uh, the, the system and disconnect the power. But with the fifty percent, is not really necessary to disconnect the power. So you can make uh, let's say partial test or test not really complete, but is. Uh, is an hour safety menu, but also another safety menu for the devices, and uh, you can do it without disconnecting the power. Uh, so another question is, uh, okay, if we are installing power supply for ESD system in safe area, then whether power supply should be C3 or non C3 power supply can be used. Uh, for ESD can be used. The equipment be powered from this power supply in the zone one as Arduino side. Okay, so the thing is uh, maybe that uh, the equipment to be powered in this case is zone one, so it's as Arduino areas, and uh, it's not. Not clear for me, Massimo, this question. Don't know if it's clear for you. Otherwise, we take it uh, as maybe some other and we'll answer later by email. Yes, but I think that uh, to power the equipment in a server area is not necessarily use a steel power supply system. But uh, Seal power supply system is important uh, to reach uh, more uh, uh, availability and more uh, uh, um, uh, a more uh, level of profitability. Uh, uh, Reliability. Reliability. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. So we think we answer this probably. If not, please ask again. Um, it's very hard as you can understand the answer live to all questions and uh, the questions we also prepared and so on. So there is another one, a safe power supply in non-SIF gives an higher availability. Uh, okay. Beside that, maintenance it is, is easy. You have only one power supply on stock. Uh, high availability depends because uh, if you, I think Massimo, this is a question regarding uh, one power without uh, one power supply without redundant, okay, yeah. uh, and uh, non-safe. This is, the application is non-safe, so is not not critical. But uh, high availability with one power supply, I think, is uh, quite hard. Hmm. You said that maintenance is easier. Okay, let's let's think about that. So we'll uh, try to to answer later about this. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's continue with this. A safe power supply shall be used for the system that only participate in the SIF. We already answered this. Okay. Is there any solution for installation of Zardus areas? Yes. You do have a solution. But those power supply are suitable for installation in zone two. And uh, massively, we can explain a little bit more about this, probably, because there are the two slides with uh, the principle of uh, this connection also. Mm -hmm. But uh, for uh, the certification in uh, to installation in zone two is fundamental. Uh, a system, uh, auto swapping system that uh, the safety power supply have inside in a, in a REC solution. This uh, system is composed to a micro switch 
that uh, allow us uh, to disconnect uh, the uh, the units, uh, the one units uh, from the rack uh, without uh, um, uh, without uh, to disconnect the power or uh, uh, without to change some uh, connection. Okay. Uh, another question we got from you was the diagnostic for power supply with the mode bus interface. Yes, of course, we, there is a possibility in our system. If we have a solution, we have a panel uh, unit is optional that you can use, you can install, you can uh, uh, read the parameters for the power supply for all the modules connected with. In this case, there are six modules connected in this example. And all six modules have been monitored by the unit over there that uh, can alert the system through the contact, multiple two contacts, and also through Modbus. So through Modbus, you can, uh, as a Modbus slave, you can connect to the, your uh, Modbus master, it can be the DCS or the safety PLCs or the PLCs, and they can read all parameters regarding the modules. Locally also you can see all parameters, but that is a limit to the numbers of modules you have there. That is a one option. Okay, and also, I don't know if I have a question, but let's continue. We go at the end. A comparison between a redundant power supplies, rack or classic wiring. Okay. So Renuda, you can have a Renuda power supply in a rack or standard power supply in a D-rail with the ring or ring solution. And uh, this is uh, the comparison. So the rack system is already a system provided. So you don't have to go just to correct the power supply over there. The maintenance don't require the wireless connection. So once you wanted to remove a unit for maintenance or proof or replacement, whatever, you don't need to disconnect the wires. Disconnection or connection is also possible to the normal operation if uh, you use the hot swapping solution. Also is on two, so also is on science. And also the diagnostic is available only for the work systems. Why use uh, our but others also solution the market, uh, the standard uh, uh, new rail uh, power supplies, we have, uh, of course, wall mounting or new rail mounting possibilities. The price is uh, better because we, some of you already asked about the prices. The price is better, of course, for, for the, because you don't pay the, for the rack. But uh, you have some limitation, you don't have diagnostic, and you need also external diodes for normal power supplies, not ours, but the normal power supplies in the rail uh, version needs diodes for redundancy. And that diodes, uh, as Massimo said in the previous slides, uh, it's maybe can be a critical point because uh, they, it's, uh, it's maybe sometimes a bottleneck is a really, they, it's, a, it's a consuming energy point and they can fail as we see sometimes. So external diodes is uh, maybe also uh, could be a problem. So this is, uh, okay. Maybe this is the, the last one. Short sequel proof, sorry. Maybe I have to. What type is one de device connected to the power supply shorts? So that is an application where I think you experience uh, you have a big power supply, you have a lot of loads, a lot of things connected with a uh, one short. Basically, the standard power supplies uh, um, say stop uh, working and uh, disconnect the power. Uh, we developed a technology where they say interesting because in case of uh, short detection, um, this power supply delivers high peak of current. Uh, we talk about 800 amps, very high current, for a small duration, uh, really little duration of time, so only 
5.5 millisecond, and this guarantee uh, the instant opening of the fuse for that, uh, of the load that is uh, in Poma at the time. So this is avoiding completely shutdown of the power supplies. So the other loads will be not affected by the failure of the power supply, of the loads. Okay, I think, uh, let me see if we do have other things. I don't see any other question from you. Uh, thank you, I think we can stop, but uh, as you may think, okay, that is another thing, so uh, line, next webinars uh, or other webinars, also this one will be uh, reproduced, will be scheduled in the future, but you can see all uh, webinars at the uh, GM International website all world webinars. Also, you can view the old webinars because they have been stored, they've been recorded and stored on our website. So we have a YouTube channel, which is uh, where there are all webinars. Uh, I want to ask you, so I want to ask you the last poll. So this is uh, really the last one. Uh, uh, and uh, maybe I want to ask you what, uh, how did we do so if you can just uh, in front, your name will won't be displayed, don't worry, just write what you like uh, to write, if you like it or not, if maybe. Also it's a way to improve our uh, communication to the customers. Thank you for voting. Okay, I can stop now. Thank you very much. Most of you say, I don't show you, but most of you should say that is an excellent uh, webinar. Like to, that you liked it. Yeah? We are really pleased about that. Thank you very much. This webinar, as I say, that it will be available soon uh, in uh, recorded, of course, uh, in our YouTube channel. And uh, if you have any questions, I remind you our, uh, say, name, and emails, of course, you have it on uh, your registration uh, email. Don't hesitate to ask for more things. If you need more details, uh, so on, we are here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Massimo. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, all our attendees, and bye-bye. Uh, we see you for the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you.